hi guys so today i wanted to do a book review um in it a scissors way it's a like a dog guide for guys who are dog lovers or are interested in being dog owners in the future it's by who it's by scissor milan he's a really dog he's a really good um dog trainer and i feel like I really have to let this out. I'm so bummed. <sighs> Humans. So, as in, I even feel like it's holding me back to really give my all in just expressing myself and connecting and interacting with you guys on this new video and this book review I want to do. Because honestly, I'm so bummed. You don't comment on someone's acne or someone's weight or someone's body whatsoever. You don't comment about something about someone physically that they cannot change or you cannot have them change in like 10 minutes come out just zip button the fly is open or come out they have something here or maybe that skirt is imeinuka you know you don't comment about someone's weight or someone's scar you know something that they cannot change that's outright crappy and it just shows who you are as a person you're not sensitive to other people's feelings you're so I'm so bummed. Either way, I'll try my best to, you know, pass on my knowledge that I really felt I should pass on about this book. It's amazing. So, I don't know. I've been highlighting it as I read it. And this is my bookmark. I'm like three quarters, so I'm almost like done. But I've been highlighting, as I've said, like through reading it and all that, like the key points that I think stand out to me and will be important. To me, because I want to be a dog owner, a dog mama someday. And I think the one of the few things that has really stood out in reading it is not to treat your dog like a human, you know? Because Aki, honestly, like, it's a pet peeve, I don't know. What you want to do dog in Goa? Like, what the hell? What you want to do in Goa? I'm on a pack of cutex, like, you know, okay, not to be racist or anything, but most of this behaviors tend to be among people who are white like it's a dog what the hell like in the natural setting that god and it like it's humans who domesticated dogs for their being for shepherding and for god and whatnot but in the like in the natural set of things so in the world would your dog have a pedicure so let me just share some points this book is amazing please look for it if you can it's called Cesar Milan's Way Cesar's Way it's the natural everyday guide to understanding and correcting common dog problems yeah and he had a dog on a chihuahua that's how I came to know of Cesar Milan so Nikiko Atao like when I was coming home from school Apo commercial in task is like our to our novels i saw this book and i was like oh god this is amazing i'm going to buy it and it's not even expensive you know you can get really good books um for second hand prices like second hand is the best to me like you don't have to go all out and spend a lot of money on things you can get um for really good deals in second hand so nearly by i think 100 hey eh, imagine such a good book like this one so let me read you the blob. Uh huh. Renowned dog expert Cesar Milan helps you see the world through your dog's eyes so you can finally eliminate problem behaviors. You learn what your dog really needs may not be what you're giving him, like too much affection. We'll talk about that later. Um, why your dog's natural pack instincts are the key to a happy relationship. Caesar's formula for a contented dog. Exercise number one in that order discipline and affection how to relate to your dog on a canine level and much more caesar arrives amid canine chaos and leaves behind peace he really rehabilitates dogs that walk on his own and like they're beyond health it's like his center he has a dog psychology center i think in Ili. so i think you need rehab your doggy well it actually is because it's a rehabilitation center for dogs who have a lot of aggression who snap at people who bite people and they're so problematic so he helps correct correct them with dog psychology you know you think the way you can treat a 
baby, then you can treat a dog. But he treats them like a dog. Like you shouldn't humanize them and or neither like use human psychology because it won't work. And like most of these problems that it was so scary for me because I don't want to make that mistake. It's like I'm a first time mom. They were first time moms when they're pregnant, they read all these books. So I don't want to make that mistake of creating like a an Susan Milan cause them like issues, an issue for my dog, like psychologically, whether it's anxiety, fear, aggression, dominance, aggression, or anything, because I'm not being a good pack leader. Like, is that relationship that dogs and other dogs have, like a pack, the way wolves are in the wild, they coordinate in packs, and that's what Susan Milan really helps us discern, you know, in these books and breaks it down and helps us understand how it originates and how it helps us have a healthy relationship with our dog like here because these issues these psychological problems that these dogs have majorly are caused by humans like if your dog is suffering from okay not suffering dog yako ikidonda alafuku kai woi woi baby sorry sorry jody sorry jody who's a good boy jody sorry that's how you treat a child not a dog because in the wild, when dogs are hurt, they, they don't get affection from other dogs and whatnot. So, when you react like that when your dog is hurt, I go like, oh my god, I'm hurt. I'm hurt because I ran like on a shiny surface floor that was wet. Sasa atakuwa na yo PTSD for dogs, aki on a shiny floor, and there was such a case in this book. So, some of these things, problems that our dogs have, we create ourselves. And this is not such an exciting video and it's not a subject that everyone can relate to, especially people who don't like animals. But I thought I could challenge myself and talk about something I really love and is like more educational to some sort. Okay, all those other things are educational but like on a psychological aspect. But I thought I could try like something different, you know. So, book review. I think this is an amazing book. <sighs> okay, so table of contents is acknowledgements contents so we have a note about oh sorry that's not important we have uh, a prologue a dog's life then the first chapter growing up with dogs so Susan is talking about his experience with um, raising dogs oh gosh I'm sorry guys my head is so mumbled up and i'm really trying to give it my all on this book review because this is an amazing book and i want you to get its contents fully and really understand it but that thing i told you like at the beginning of the video that girl who made that comment about my skin it's really bugging me and i think it's imeni sumbua like my aura so i'm like food jittery so just to cope with me guys so the first chapter is Growing up with dogs, so Susanna told me a story. Okay, because he's Mexicano, he's Latino, he's a Hispanic, and how dogs in Mexico are versus how he came to the U.S. and he saw the culture shock, and how dogs were like being humanized so much in America as in contrast to where he grew up, like Ushagoko, Mexico. And then chapter two, if we could talk to the animals, the language of energy. Then chapter 3, dog psychology, no coach required. Chapter 4, the power of the pack. Uh, chapter 5, the issues, not the problems with dogs. How we screw up our dogs. Chapter 6, mm, dogs in the red zone, dangerous aggression. Um, chapter 7, scissors fulfillment formula for a balanced and healthy dog. Dogs that usually have these issues are not usually balanced, you know. Um, chapter 8, can't you all just get along? Simple tips for living happily with your dog. Chapter 9, which is the final chapter, fulfilling our dogs, fulfilling ourselves. Because usually we get dogs for our own needs, but we, we have the best intentions at heart, but we're not really fulfilling the dog's needs, you know. Yeah, and I'm loving this pink hair, guys! The jacquard in the building. Be brave, you know. Like, I was like, hey, Ika like Ibako, Niko Quarantine, I'm at home. Who's gonna see me? Nobody. But again, you need to be brave. Like, I think I take after my mom in a lot of aspects of being brave because my mom had all sorts of hair. She dyed her hair so much, drastic colors. Even she had her hair at some point purple with purple dye. So she was like, ah, you, 
go ahead, go ahead. Like life is about risks. Yeah, and I'm so happy that I can. My parents are liberal, but in a good, strict, healthy way, because we're also a Christian family. Like I can do what I want and experiment. I love my piercing. Okay, can you see them? I don't care. And I want to get a nose piercing soon. You know, just explore. And you know, we are young ones. Yeah, I don't think it will be normal for like a 50 year old to show pushka of pink braids or have pink hair. So, you know, you only live once. Ooh. So, do that. So, this basically, I'm telling you, do that thing you've been afraid of doing. Mm, do it. So, my highlighted points. This is a weird video, but you know. I just be reading the points. I don't. I think they are they are really self-explanatory. And if I think a point is not self-explanatory, maybe I'll go ahead and just um, you know, explain and expound. So you see, this first point it's it says um, I don't use words or commands. I use energy and touch. The same way you can feel someone's energy around you. Eh? This guy really likes me and. It, and I give off good energy and good vibes. This that's the same way dogs can read off our energies as their owners. Like Una Zambia dog yako, hi baby, hi baby, and you're all happy. But if inside you're sad, they're like those chemical hormones that are being released up from your body that your dog can sense and smell and know that you're not okay. And if you tell your dog like Nika to come am to we took up but you don't follow through with that instruction, you to shall join their mind. I can get away with this. That's the same way the dogs can read energy. If you're being strict, if maybe they are misbehaving or maybe you're walking your dog a lafu, it's snapping at maybe a child and you're tugging at the leash but you're not being consistent with the instruction like but you're, you're going to let your dog get away with it at the end of the day. You're not sure about yourself, you're not confident with what you're doing with it. So it won't follow through. So dogs don't follow words or anything. You should use words. I mean, you shouldn't use words or commands, you should use energy and touch. I don't want this to be such a long video, so I think I'll read through the point. Um, the concept of a park is ingrained eh, hey, woo. the concept of a park is ingrained in your dog's DNA. In a park there are only two roles, the role of leader and the role of follower. If you don't become your dog's park leader, he will assume that role and try to dominate you. So you must take charge and leadership. Nikatu mtoi akiachwana parent wake like amepoyo authority walk over the parent and there's a two tantrum because i want this and then the parent just buys that thing for the child and not like disciplining them and telling them or explaining to them that you don't get your way every time you know so you should always lead and the dog follows okay uh-huh so caesar is saying here that he likes to prepare the food himself scooping and mixing it with his bare hands so their food will always have their pack leader scent in it. That's a good tip. Uh huh. <laughs> okay, so I'm seeing how I should put this. Mm -hmm. Okay, most of my private clients don't need this. Is Caesar talking? don't need to send their dogs to the center to get them well just as not all human beings need to go to group therapy to deal with their psychological issues most of the cases i handle involve dogs who simply need stronger leadership from their owners plus rules boundaries limitations and consistency in their own homes to become better but there are other cases where the best solution is to bring the dogs to have the support and influence of their own kind so they can relearn relearn how to be dogs because we humanize them so much and I think that's the best thing you could ever do to an animal even if it's domestic you know and then I believe that each dog comes into your life to teach you something that's, I believe that's true and then um, their parks and family units definitely operated like an organized society the dogs that is with clear rules and boundaries that clearly tells you even from the previous points I've read 
that dogs need boundaries and limitations because in their normal park they do have these limitations and rules so if you don't they be dominant over you and you think that they are the park leader and then they'll have and then they'll start having like dominance issues uh -huh. they communicate with each other through energy just like all animals in the jungle katu vile hivi kwa river and then kuna giraffe zebras da 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 alafu lion inakuja the other animals can sense when the lion is not in that hunting mood and amekuja tu kunya maji so they just chill but kuna time to when a sense lion iko mbali imewategea wao wanatoka mbio so it's all about energy not words or touching or what not energy people And a really important thing I learned in this chapter is the first, first chapter. I think I think it's growing up with dogs. There's a Milan explaining. He really he said something that his grandfather told him. Um, he said, "Never work against Mother Nature. You only succeed when you work with her. So therefore, you need to work with the pack, um, pack strategy with your dog, because that's how Mother Nature intended it to be. So if you work against it, you'll be." torturing yourself and giving your dog issues and having a hard time and not really building that healthy relationship you want with your dog okay i think maybe we'll continue this next time but there are a lot of good good knowledge here for dog owners aha uh -huh. this is a random one i think from the chapter of issues this is other dog phobia the correct response to a dog's phobia is to show leadership. First, drain the dog's energy since a phobia is a kind of reverse obsession. Like when dogs have an obsession with something, if it's chasing squirrels in their backyard, armor to this tennis ball that no other person can touch, it's the dogs alone. You know, it's a kind of reverse obsession. The same principles apply. If a dog is tired and relaxed, she is much less likely to be phobic and much more responsive to a strong pack leader who will help her move past her fears. So that was just a few of the goody goody information and tips you can get from this book. Scissors Way is amazing. Please go look for it. And I just wanted to share this knowledge because I thought that it would be selfish because I can't give every one of you this book. Because it's my guide. This is like, later when I'm going to hey, dog in a sumbwa, ebu, what did Caesar say about that? You know, if I forget, because you know, human is to error. And just to keep, your knowledge is thick, you always have to keep reading it. So this is my guide. I'm keeping it for life. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this knowledge, though it's much more serious content, like no laughing, laughing, or no story time or something like me telling you what's been going on or like a series i've been really interested in or something so i hope you all are good and yeah see you next time